Michael Williams, Burn, Benjamin Nicolets, Jeskai Control. Lightning Helix versus Lightning Bolt. Well, and also Lightning Helix, but that's <laughs> neither here nor there. <laughs> yeah, both decks playing both cards. <laughs> yeah. It's just a matter of which one they're more trying to leverage. Yeah, and I think uh, being on the play here is, is pretty important for Nikolic. He gets to play his lands uh, untapped. Or sorry, he gets to play his lands tapped uh, basically a turn sooner. Um, you know, he's going to get a couple of free cards here off a of Goblin Guide. Mostly he just wants to make sure he can protect his life total, and part of that is making sure you don't take too much damage from your own lands. And he did start on that tap Steam Vents for Williams. He'll start by cracking a Wooded Foothills for a Sacred Foundry. He's at 17. It's for a Goblin Guide. That drew Nikolic a Scalding Tarn. Nikolic falls to 18. Second land for Nikolic's Fluttestrand. No further action back on Williams for his second turn. Now, if he can follow this up with uh, either two more one-drop creatures or potentially an Eidolon of the Great Revel, uh, if Nikolic doesn't have a Counterspell for it, um, it's going to be really tough for him to, to crawl back in this game. I'm very curious to see what type of interaction Nikolic can put up against this burn deck. Williams will crack another Wooded Foothills, puts him at 16, goes and finds a basic mountain. Tapping one land certainly feels like another creature. Yeah, it's pre-combat. Makes a lot of sense. Some Monastery Swift Spear is added. And a second Goblin Guide. They're all going to come across. Yeah, these are the starts uh, from a fair blue deck that you always dread in the, uh, the opening sequences. Nikolic lets one Goblin Guide trigger resolve. Glacial Fortress was added to the hand. See if he wants to do something else before the other trigger. He's going to sacrifice that Flooded Strand. He'll fall to 17. Find out if it's for something to use this combat. It's a basic planes. Wouldn't be surprised to see a Lightning Helix during this combat. That, this is actually kind of interesting. Uh, Nikolic knows that he only has one planes in the deck and he wants to fetch it up. If he accidentally draws the planes off of the Goblin Guide, then uh, he actually just ends up having to shock in order to get the right mana and, and play the Stabcast Formation to block. Second Goblin Guide trigger reveals a Lightning Helix. Nikolic actually just had Stabcaster Mage, which he flashes in to trade with the Goblin Guide. Takes three from the other two creatures and falls to 14. Back to his turn, he will draw that Lightning Helix. That is a good draw, though. Oh, absolutely. It's one of the best cards you can possibly have from Nikolic's side of things. Uh, my guess, main phase here to make sure he gains the three life, plays around Skullcrack. I would target Monster Swiss Spear because I think that Flurry is, or Michael's going to throw a Flurry of Burn spells at him next turn, and it just represents the most potential damage. You can kind of manage that to a turn, but there's a chance that Swiss Spear ends up doing an extra two points that you were not really accounting for. Nicholas agrees. Swiss Spear down. Nicholas to 17. Scalding Tarn played as his third land. Back over to Williams. Plays a Mountain and a Monastery Swiss Spear. Attack with the Guide and the Swiss Spear. Reveals Lightning Bolts on the top of Nicholas's deck. No removal spells in this combat, though. Nikolic falls to 14. Notably, no burn spells either to pump that Monastery Swiss Spear. So Lightning Bolt plus uh, another removal spell from Nikolic could take care of both these threats and leave Michael Williams without a whole lot of gas in the tank. Nikolic decides he wants to draw that Lightning Bolt, so leaves his Scalding Tarn uncracked. He'll draw that Bolt for turn, play a Glacial Fortress, and pass back. Lava Spike to draw for the turn here. Assume it's going to be cast pre-combat to try to get that extra damage in with Prowess. Nikolic here, probably going to main phase, or not main phase, but cast his Lightning Bolt right now before that Monster Swifter gets any bigger. Yeah, that is what's happening. Lava Spike, Nikolic responds with Lightning Bolt on Swift Spear. Swift Spear is going to bite it. Yeah, and now Nikolic uh, can fetch with the Scalding Tarn, cast Electrolyze to take care of the Goblin Guide. Uh, he also has the option next turn to Snapcaster Mage plus Lightning Helix. But he has to be aware of Skull Cracks from Michael Williams and make sure that he's uh, guaranteed to gain the life from the Helix. But he also wants to just make sure he can contain all of these threats from, uh, from Michael. Lava Spike still on the stack. Nikolic is going to fetch down to 13 for Basic Mountain. Taps three lands. Here's Spell Queller. There's one copy in the sideboard. Going to try to quell that Lava Spike. That's interesting. It uh, it soaks the three damage, potentially blocks the Goblin Guide. And if Michael just doesn't have an answer to it, uh, you know, everything's gravy. If he does have the answer to it, it's still a lightning bolt being thrown at a creature that's not your head. Yeah, and the, and the nice thing is Williams is extremely unlikely to have a Searing Blaze. So it should soak up three damage one way or the other. 
Right. Really Searing Blaze is sorry. Searing Blaze is usually the card that uh, really punishes you for playing cards like Spellqueller in any deck. But against Jeskai Control, it's a liability to have any card like that that only really works if a creature is on the battlefield from your opponent. Nicholas got to connect with that Spellqueller and play a Celestial Colonnade back on William's side. He's a little bit heavy on lands. Going to start this turn attacking with Goblin Guide that revealed Lightning Helix. Before damage, Nicholas is just going to electrolyze down the guide. Takes nothing in that combat and draws that Lightning Helix. Williams goes for Lightning Bolt on the Spell Queller while Nikolic is tapped low. Frees up that Lava Spike that'll knock Nikolic to 10. Yeah, but that's effectively the same as if, uh, you know, it countered the Lightning Bolt, right? Three yes. mana counter it. And with the Lightning Helix in hand, I don't know if there's much that Michael can really do unless he has Skull Cracks. He's been sitting on the whole game. Basic Islands is where Nikolic is going to start. Just guy, not a deck that does too much at sorcery speed. Nicholas, not a player that does too much at sorcery speed. Right. Now, uh, Nicholas does have Lightning Helix and Snapcaster Mage. So if Michael has a Skullcrack here, he can perhaps keep from uh, getting punished too hard. But the Snapcaster Mage uh, out of the uh, graveyard casting another Helix. It's going to make sure he pads his life total quite well. Yeah, so he. Lightning Helix is met by Skullcrack, Snapcaster on Lightning Helix, so Nikolic makes sure he gains three life here. Effectively, That's a wash with the right. Skullcrack. Right, but Michael Williams takes six damage. He's all the way down to eight, facing down a Snapcaster Mage. Williams plays Idol out on the Great Revel. Always a little stressful to play that when you're down on life totals, and Nikolic is going to go to work on that. I guess the player at eight, he fires up his Celestial Colonnade. That'll attack Williams down to four. With Nikolic at ten, not clear Williams has any way to win the game. He has to lose his own Eidolon while also dealing damage to Nikolic. Yeah, Nikolic is heads up player enough to know that he should not block with a Snapcast from... Well, he does. Up, up, uh, Eidolon trades a Snapcaster. Post-combat Grim Lava Mancer. Nikolic is going to cycle Hieroglyphic Illuminations. Got to figure he's interested in closing the game. We'll see if he fires up the Colonnade to go for lethal on this turn. He'll start with Field of Rune. So I'm just going to go back to this uh, block on the Idol on the Great Revel because I think this is a good teaching moment. Um, in this scenario, if Nikolic doesn't block the Idol on the Great Revel, he goes eight. Michael only has two cards in hand. The only way that uh, he can kill Nikolic is double Boros Charm, and he has to stack it in such a way that it plays around his own Eidolon the Great Revel. 